I wanted to talk to you guys about a few things. There was an option select article that was fraudulent player carried by intentional game mechanic. This one was pretty good. It was posted not that long ago. And it was literally all he does is throw. It said Josh Franklin about Alvin Heath, who is fed up with running into Heath in online ranked matches. Everyone knows he's completely carried by throws. And it's clear that he can only beat me because of them, right? This great option select article. You also see scrub quotes all the time. This fucking guy just throws me to death. I hate him. This guy sucks. And what I realized about this is that there's actually a really funny conversation to have about throws and why they're so important. Because in reality, right, when it comes to any fighting game, it doesn't matter if the game is Street Fighter 2, it doesn't matter if the game is Uni, it doesn't matter if it's Guilty Gear, it doesn't matter if it's Tekken, it, it, Marvel, whatever it is. The core thing that fighting games have, the key mix up, in any of them, unblockables and blockables, strikes and throws. That's what fighting games are at their core. The reason you need throws in games, the reason you need fast, strong offense in any game is that if no offense is unreactable, so if you can see everything, if you're literally Neo in the Matrix, then offense is useless in the game. Defense is too powerful. There's no reason to attack. You might as well both just sit there and do nothing until the end of time. That's partially why throws should exist, right? They're a good way to disrupt People just sitting there blocking all the time. Now, the thing is, is, in some games, you think about what is there to hit people, and sometimes it's not throws. There are games where your throws and offense are not really that important, right? They're less important than other games. I think a good example of this is Tekken or Marvel. So in Tekken, for instance, throws are reactable. You can react to what throw your opponent's doing and break them. Is it a one? Is it a one plus two? Is it a two throw? Like you have to try to see those things. And if they hit you with like a chain throw, then you have to try to guess the follow-up sequence there. So that's a whole thing. And then if you're busy trying to break all these throws, they have fast, low attacks that you cannot see that you'll get hit by. And yeah, and unique animation, grab, like Shining Wizard and stuff like that, right? So they have other things too that you have to worry about. And they have other unreactable offense that you have to worry about as well, right? When you're worried about whether it's going to be a mid, whether it's going to be a low, which throw break do I have to do? There's a lot of offense to think about there. So there's a lot going on. And then you think about a game like Marvel 3. And the reason I say throws are less important is that in that game, the offense is so powerful. The, the strike mix up is so strong that you don't even have to worry about the throw. You just get stuck in a bad spot. You block like Doom Missiles or Ami Assist or whatever the lockdown assist is. And then Magneto is just try jumping and murdering you. You don't need a throw here. Throw is not necessary because the strike mix up is so scary. But then at the same time, because the strike mix up is so scary and you're sitting there trying to block the try jump, Magneto just throws you and gets a full combo and kills you anyway. Even in games like Marvel or Guilty Gear or, you know, games where like throws are less pivotal because the mix-ups are strong enough to hit them without it, where the strike is strong enough, uh, there are things that are like throws that you have to keep in mind. Same thing with command throws. And Filament brought up a great point the other day that like Glacius Shatter, it's a projectile, but it's kind of a throw. Glacius Shatter is a projectile that appears, the light version is next to him, Medium version, heavy version. It's a projectile, but it's an unblockable projectile. And to get out of it, you have to jump or do a projectile invincible move. Again, it serves the purpose of unreactable or tough to react to offense that makes you move. But then we are talking about why the throw system in the game determines how all offense works. In Street Fighter 4, when you crouched and hit light punch and light kick at the same time, you got a crouch tech, right? A crouching light kick would come out. And if they try to throw you, you would break their throw. Really powerful defensive option against throws. Now, because of this, characters that have good crouching light kicks are really strong, right? If your crouching light kick chains or if your crouching light kick leads to a combo or if your crouching light kick is slow or doesn't lead to a combo, that's bad. On the other hand, when someone was pressuring you in Street Fighter 4 and they wanted to open you up, they would walk up and do delayed buttons. The reason they would do that is to try to hit your crouch tech. And so because of that, the offense in that game was based around dealing with crouch tech. How do I stop crouch tech from hitting me? How do I frame trap it? Do I have moves that go over their crouch tech? Like Rose close stand medium kick, right? It beats throw, it you know goes over lows. Th those are options that are, are like that. In Street Fighter V, what happens when you crouch tech? You just whiff a throw. So people just walk in, walk out, you whiff a throw and they punish. So the way people pressure you in Street Fighter V looks and is very different fundamentally because of how the throw system and throw teching works in the game. How throw is handled dramatically changes the kind of offense that you can do. And in Street Fighter, throws are really important, especially in Street Fighter 4. If you back throw someone with some characters, you just unblockable them and they die. And in those games, there's not that much unreactable offense outside of 
strike or throw. So think about a game like Guilty Gear or think about a game like Marvel where you're very fast, super offensive. You don't really need throws to open people up a lot of the time. The difference is in those games, right? The throw is executed in a different way and it changes how the offense has to work in those games. In Marvel, you just hit back plus heavy. Back plus heavy will throw or throw tech. Because of that, when you jump back and you hit back plus H off the ground, you can air throw people, right? Or if you're air dashing at someone and trying to hit heavy, you will get an accidental air throw. The other thing is in Marvel, when someone's pressuring you up close, you can just mash back plus heavy and you get a defensive throw. So people have to be very careful about how they pressure you. This is a, a much bigger thing in Guilty Gear, I think, than almost any other game. In Guilty Gear, throws are instant. And if you're not in the way of a throw, you get a heavy button. So you swing with whatever your heavy button is. When you're playing Guilty Gear chat, one of the first things you learn in the game is you cannot stand right next to someone and meaty them. They'll just wake up throw. And it's a one frame throw. It's super hard to meaty and like you get defensively thrown over and over and over and over, right? Because wake up throw is so good. You know, in Street Fighter, you can walk up, stagger, walk up, stagger. In Guilty Gear, you can't do that. That's a one frame defensive throw. It's just instant. Like you're just like, well, okay, I just got thrown into the corner and I might die now. It literally changes how you have to pressure people. It's why safe jumps are so good. It's why running up to people and pressuring is really good. It's why you have to learn how to meaty people from further away so that you don't get thrown while you're trying to meet people. It's like the most fundamental thing about a game like Guilty Gear. So how the throw works, whether you have throw option selects, like Guilty Gear has plenty of throw option selects, right? Or whatever it is. Once you learn how to meaty in Guilty Gear without worrying about getting wake up thrown all the time, the game completely changes. And also in Guilty Gear, learning, oh, this is fake, I can just throw this. That is such a core thing to the game. Yeah, that's why in Guilty Gear, you see people do like projectiles and then YRC or RC them and then do pressure. So you put the projectile on top of them first because the throw game in that game, that's how it works. Now in Guilty Gear Strive, there's now a throw button. It doesn't activate on one frame. So in Guilty Gear Strive, what you're gonna see is people jump in, like run up or walk backwards and then people are just gonna whiff throw tech, right? And you're just gonna be punishing their throw whiff. You don't have to care about how you time your meaties nearly as much. Like projectile YRC is not gonna be as important to stop people from just waking up with stuff. In Mortal Kombat, you have to guess if someone's throwing you backwards or forwards by teching with one or two or whatever, right? You want to do three or four, whatever it is. When you throw tech in these things, you know, because throws are high, you can duck them. So in Mortal Kombat, people walk up to you and they try to throw you and you duck the throw and you get a big punish or they duck and then they block, right? To try to get under a throw. And then if it turns out that they duck the throw, then they punish you. Or if they, somebody walks up to you and does a delayed mid, it hits you because you're trying to hit one or two to break a throw. And so it, the game revolves around beating throw or not. So much about that is based around throw or throw bait or strings that beat throws automatically because they look like they're going to whiff and then people try to throw tech. Like so much of the game is wrapped around that idea. In uni, for instance, people throw tech with stuff like uh, 3C, which is like an anti-air. So if you try to do your little short hop, it beats that. If you try to throw tech, it beats that. So what do they do in Uni? They run up to you and then they back dash. And then you whiff your anti-air and they whiff punish it. Yeah, Uni has like three different throw tech OSs. You can throw tech OS with a bunch of different stuff. But 3C is like the first one you learn because it also beats assault and most people just do run up assault. The throw system in Uni is really interesting. Throw uh, Defense in Uni is really strong though, right? It's one of those games where it's defensive focused you just need throws right you need to have something that will throw off what they're trying to do on defense so you have to have either fast high low mix-ups a command throw a regular throw some kind of stagger pressure you have to have something in there that makes people not just sit there in some games the throws cannot be tagged or in some games like the throw leads to much less than the strike or the strike leads to much less than the throw like when you're fighting against some characters in some games you run for your life when they're trying to throw you but you don't care if they hit you how the throw system works in a game and how beating throws works and how beating throw tech works and how setting up throws work defines like almost all of the offense and almost all of the defensive choices in these kinds of games so that's why when you read stuff like this the satire articles or you read the scrub quotes about throws and you're like man it's just so funny and the more you think about it the more those scrub quotes just make you laugh if you're looking for how throws work in each game you will find the core to how their offense is run it just immediately will open your mind to it because so much of the game is going to be beating throws setting up throws baiting throw techs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Listen. What do you think about Leffen saying that Tekken throws are basically cheese? I think Leffen calling stuff cheese is hilarious, but 
Uh, yeah, I mean, he's right in the sense that once you are super experienced, you break throws like with 95% accuracy or something. But it takes a long time to get there. And yeah, I mean, if I was playing a brand new fighting game within 10 minutes of fighting against other people, I would be like, okay, that right there, that's not that good. And if I was a better player, I'd be able to stop it. But in the beginning, you're just not going to be able to stop it. That's just how it goes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're just like, ah, I guess I'm dead.